seriously? Logan is more than 160 years old? Every romantic encounter he has in these movies is now officially creepy, but still not as creepy as Edward Cullen's. Keep on running, and don't look back. Now let's cross the border and fight in every major American war for the next hundred years. During this opening credit sequence, we see Logan and Victor surviving shots to the chest while kicking all sorts of ass in every war imaginable. And their legendary story somehow doesn't spread throughout the world. Also, I understand he was probably angry and bored, but did he have to fight in every single war in history? There wasn't even one war where he was like, no, fuck you guys, I'm sitting this one out. Also, Spielberg saw this opening sequence and immediately said, I want to make the horse version of this. Okay, so they were surrounded, but so fucking what? They're invincible. No one can hurt them. So why don't they run away? Or do they know that Stryker's going to offer them a special ops job once they're thrown in jail? Movie rips off the evil mentor recruits the hero while he's in prison thing from Batman Begins. I'm having Blade Trinity flashbacks, and he didn't even use a sword in that movie. I'm not saying this mission calls for them to be more covert. I'm just saying that even if they weren't on a particular mission, since they're in Nigeria, it might behoove them to be a little more covert in general. Why are we here? All in good time. You really need to be kept in the dark that we're looking for this super rare, indestructible metal. We don't want the fanboys blowing their wad just yet. Also, Logan wants to know what the mission is, but only seconds before it begins. It's Huda! It takes these assholes forever to spot a team of almost all white mercenaries casually standing outside their heavily guarded gate. Movie rips off, the guy pretends to surrender by lifting his arms, but then pulls a secret gun from his back thing from every action film that came out after Die Hard. We interrupt this Wolverine movie to bring you Hit Girl. The tank viewfinder shows you what you'd see if you were literally looking down the barrel? Never mind all the loud gunfire that happened a minute ago. It's the explosion that finally gets these people to notice something is wrong. Hilarious, ironic Muzak cliche. Thank you, sir. You look really nice today. I feel bad for Ryan Reynolds because he's typecast as Van Wilder in every movie, no matter the genre. Bad guy henchmen line up in a formation that ensures the camera can still clearly see their boss, but that in reality would get several of them shot by the men behind them. Also, the boss is completely unprotected. This is just a terrible formation all around. Okay. People are dead. Really? Were they bloodless people? So it's at this point that I wonder, where is Victor in all this? We saw him climb the top of the building and we saw him laugh at murder from the roof, but he didn't help one bit. And he loves killing people. And not once does he show back up in this scene. How exactly does word get out to secret military guys that the African Diamond Lord has a rock in his possession that he merely considers a souvenir? It's not like he's bragging about it or using it in any special way. The f***ing thing is a paperweight. You didn't sign up for this. To be fair, you didn't sign up for anything. You were given the option to be in this special team or be in jail. Also, we didn't sign up for this cliche. <laughs> The weather knows something dramatic just happened. Here's something we probably didn't need an entire Origins movie to know. Sensitive Logan is boring. Oh, she's a goner. Discount Michelle Williams. This is always dumb to do, especially for a carnival prize. There's no way the paper got this picture of Chris unless he's got 8x10 glossies of him looking exactly the way he did when we first saw him. Also, Circus Freak? That's harsh. How about Hobbit Chic? Also, this is being considered a regular old murder and... Not like a wild animal got loose and mauled the guy to death? Also, the second article in this paper is how the local residents are unhappy with the cops for not finding the killer sooner. Strange, considering it just happened recently enough for there to be a big headline about it, aka last night. Wow, it's a good thing that Logan and Kayla switched up who got to keep the car today, or else he couldn't have left in a huff like this. Earlier, she got to keep the car, which made sense because she's a school teacher and probably has a shorter day. You're not an animal, Logan. Right after she says this, of course there are assholes blocking the road for no damn reason other than to put these words to the test. In some kind of a hurry there, pal? Hey, I get it, this character's an asshole, but do you need to be in a hurry to be upset about this situation? I mean, I could be in no hurry at all and I'd want to punch this guy. The writers needed a flimsy conflict here for some reason, and the best they could come up with was two Canadian bros blocking the road with their trucks who won't let Logan pass because they're having a conversation? I know it's Canada, but Jesus. And every night, he looks up in the sky and sees the moon and howls her name. Jeez, we already know his girlfriend was going to die anyway, but now this story is like a double whammy. She'll probably die in the next scene. Means the Wolverine. Roll credits. Logan can smell Victor only when it's way too late to do anything about it. At least in this situation. Maybe I would care that this chick is dead if the screenwriters had given her any more character development than just chick Logan is f***ing. <laughs> No cliché. Also, and that's the origin of Wolverine screaming to the heavens when his girlfriend tragically dies. Why? Why? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Isn't this the most pointless fight ever? Aren't they both super strong with super healing abilities? Do they just like getting tired? Here's another asshole truck driver not stopping or even slowing down after hitting a body with his windshield. I am truly confused at Victor's motivations. He seems to be mad that Logan left the mercenary group and got a girlfriend, and that Logan doesn't want to kill humans. And while that's maybe enough to cause a brotherly argument, is it really enough to justify a killing spree? Maybe we should have started with X-Men Origins Victor. We're gonna make you indestructible, but first, we're gonna have to destroy you. 
What? Also, who volunteers for an experimental procedure, the only details of which they possess is that it will be the most painful thing ever? No questions asked at all until he's strapped on the f***ing table? To kill him, you're gonna have to embrace the other side. And find a cure for invincibility. I want new ones. What do you want them to say? Wolverine. Roll credits? Yeah, definitely roll credits. Did you just pause everything and go stamp these new dog tags and then get the procedure underway? Oh man, I thought Wolverine was a goner for sure. Scene does not contain a Wolverine-style lap dance. You know, for the ladies. Oh wow, I thought for sure that would have worked on the guy who's been taking bullets the whole movie. Some of my son's old clothes will probably fit you. Because my son lived here until he became Wolverine-sized, and then left to pursue a career on Wall Street. I know I'm an asshole, but didn't they coat his bones with adamantium? So those bone claws were not smooth and sharp like knife blades before they were coated with metal, but after. Also, and I'm really stepping into nitpicking asshole territory here, there is no way these claws fit inside his forearm whenever they're not extended. Also, cartoon claws. Why is the moon so lonely? Rehash of dumb moon story is rehashed. I take my bike for a spin. You'll need it for the convenient escape later. Weapon X is in the barn. He's just murdered two civilians. Blow him to bits. I suppose we're about to learn they put some sort of tracking device on him during that surgery? Or put it in his f***ing dog tags or some shit, right? This is the 70s, right? How the f*** are they transmitting video of this chase? Well, shooting didn't work last time, let's shoot him again. Also, not that it matters, but these are the most expert marksmen in the world and can't hit Wolverine or the motorcycle. Alpha-1 did not lose him! How did Alpha-1 ever find him? Wolverine randomly sped out of the barn on a motorcycle into a random part of the woods and came out of a random section of it. There's an army vehicle just driving around in case that happened? Shoot a missile! how good innocent people tend to die around you. He's seriously taunting Wolverine at this moment? For real? The helicopter spilled a perfect trail of fuel so that Wolverine could do this. Walking away from the fireball cliche. Also, Wolverine's screensaver. Zero never stood a chance. But this gun will do what every gun in history couldn't. The only thing that'll take him down is an adamantium bullet. That's why I only made six of them. Also, you just pumped his body full of adamantium. And he's invincible. How stupid is this shit anyway? The young mutant you've been looking for? We found him. Doesn't matter how, that shit's easy. Finding mutants? Pfft, child's play. That's why Professor X has to put on a helmet and use a giant Epcot Center golf ball computer to find them. Also, in this case, you're talking about Cyclops, who, if you knew about him and were therefore looking for him, is a kid in high school and isn't hiding anywhere. So once you first heard about him, he should have been easy to find. Quite a few months later myself. Couldn't take rounding him up. John plays the pronoun game so that Wolverine has to ask who the hell he's talking about. We hunted our own kind, Logan. Where was Professor X and Cerebro during all this? Surely he could have seen the mutants killing each other and want to do something about it. Just what this movie needed. Fat bastard. Is there even a stretcher big enough to take this guy out of here? <laughs> it ain't him I'm worried about getting out of here on a stretcher. Well, Wolverine is made of adamantium, so there's no suspense where this scene is going. This movie expects me to believe that a no shit taking Wolverine is going to put on boxing gloves and have playtime with someone he's interrogating. Did these f***ers even read a comic book before writing this thing? The only reason Stryker is at this school is so we can have a cool scene where we find out he's working with Victor. It's not like he was needed in order to capture this kid. It's not like Victor wasn't hunting mutants on his own the entire rest of the movie. What's the island? Multiple choice answer. Is it A, one of the more forgotten Michael Bay movies from the 2000s? Compared to the rest of his body of work, it's not a bad little film. Is it B, definitely not whatever Sean Bean told you it was? Is it C, a landmass completely surrounded by water? Or D, all of the above? What's the island? It's for... Stryker takes him after Victor's caught him. They must teach the pronoun game to these guys. Oh, yeah. Takes who? Logan really should know what Fred is talking about, despite his insistence on playing the pronoun game. John told him about how he used to round up mutants five minutes ago. What's Stryker up to, Fred? What's the end game? He's taking their powers. How the f*** do you know this all of a sudden? You just said some people say he's doing experiments on them there. The rumor is that Stryker's doing experiments on them there. Coming with you, Logan. There's no redemption where I'm going. I ain't asking. I'm coming with you and you can't stop me, cliche. This Bourbon Street scene does not contain a Mardi Gras. The escaped prisoner they're looking for is in the first place they look in New Orleans. Also, if you were put on an island prison where they did experiments on you and stuff, would you just go back home and be this easy to find? Also, no one would ever play poker with a guy who can do this kind of stuff with cards. Especially not Daniel Negrano, or even a character played by Daniel Negrano. Shouldn't have done that, because now I'm gonna kill you. With what? You know this guy is practically invincible, right? You're gonna punch him to death? I'm calling bullshit on this fight right here. Victor just senses where this guy's gonna pop up next. He wins not by strength or fingernails or superpowers, just good guesswork. 
And it's not forgiven just because you have Victor say you're predictable right afterwards either. Wait, this asshole ran back two blocks away from the fight just so he could jump up on the roof and run and do this jump thingy? You're gonna die for what you did to her. Then do it already! Victor! Gambit chases after Wolverine because he stupidly thinks that he wants to take him back to the island, but he allows Victor to run away, a man he should know extremely well and will want to kill. Wolverine is a dick to fire escapes. Man, the NOPD really doesn't give a shit, do they? This is f***ing Bourbon Street, and we still haven't seen one cop investigate the dude who got thrown through the wall at a jazz club. So you're gonna take me to this island where I can kill Creed, Stryker, and pretty much everyone you hate in this world? You could have helped me kill Creed a minute ago, but you decided very stupidly that I was the bad guy in this situation. Cool, evil guy is evil scene, but he said we know about your son. It's not like your problem is solved. Other people also know. It's not like no one will miss the four-star general, but whatever, evil guy is evil. There it is, the island. Three Mile Island. Wah, wah. I want to know why. I needed your powers for the pool. The script just hit a world record for having a character say something vague that requires the other character to ask what the hell they mean. My son was the first piece of the puzzle. Logan, you were the last. Well, no, Cyclops was. You kidnapped him after you gave Wolverine his adamantium and he escaped the facility. Also, let's talk about Stryker's plan. He wants to locate dangerous mutants and create Deadpool, a controllable super mutant with the strengths of all those mutants. But aren't Logan and Victor already pretty damn indestructible on their own? Without all the other mutant powers, and even without the adamantium? I've learned that nothing motivates the men in your family like revenge. Kayla knew exactly the time to show up in order for this to be dramatic. They gave me a shot of hydrochlorothiazide. A drug that in no way can make healthy people appear dead, but that's not important right now. Did you know that her sister has diamond hard skin? Now, we're in no way saying this is Emma Frost, but we're strongly implying it, and it makes the Emma Frost appearance in X-Men First Class all the more head-scratching. I heard you were the moon, and I was your Wolverine. But you're the trickster, aren't you? So then, who would be the moon in the story? Well, now that I know the truth about Kayla, go ahead and keep creating your super mutant that kills other mutants, Striker. I won't get in the way. Your little mind games don't work on me. But why? <laughs> that ought to hold him. Activate weapon 11. The bonding process isn't complete. The bonding process isn't complete yet, cliche. I can't say I know a lot about Deadpool in the comics, but I can say that every Deadpool fan I know hates this movie for what they did to Deadpool. Are diamonds bulletproof? Jesus, we're still in the 70s here, right? Pristine quality video from rotatable security cameras displayed via a custom software interface? The f***? Wait, what? Deadpool kicked Wolverine out of the warehouse here, and then we cut to Kayla, and now suddenly Wolverine has this giant f***ing head start up the smokestack? <laughs> Professor X Machina. Also, Charles waits until after Cyclops is captured, thrown in prison, and begins to escape to finally talk to him. Why does Deadpool even bother with punching and kicking when he has swords and Cyclops power? Also, sure, he can teleport, but shit, guys, there are only two places he can stand and attack you from. Just start flailing your claws in front of you, and you win. His brain may heal, but his memories won't grow back. Well, that certainly sounds scientific, so I'm inclined to trust you on this one. This doesn't change anything between us, Victor. Except the part about how I came here to cut your head off and ended up saving your life, helping you up, and generally brewing out with you in the last ten minutes. The f*** has this asshole been? He got here just in time to be useless. It's not like Wolverine is gonna die from falling debris or anything. Also, what would splitting the piece of smokestack in half actually do? There would still be rubble that should hit Logan, considering how close it was to hitting him. Instead, not even anything that amounts to gravel comes down on his head. I guess that second bullet is for Cyclops' memory as well? But that would make us no better than you. That would make us no better than them cliché. This is the movie saying, yeah, all that bullshit you just saw is actually canon somehow. And also, f*** you. Funhouse face Patrick Stewart. You're safe now. God knows what I would've done without Wolverine looking for his revenge and breaking you out of here, or why I allowed this to happen in the first place, but everyone get on the helicopter. Also, how does everyone fit on this helicopter anyway? Can't quite put my finger on what's wrong with this scene of mutants running towards Xavier and his helicopter, but it might be that everything in it looks fake as shit. Where the hell am I? Phew. Good thing for Stryker that memory loss guess turned out to be accurate. Bullshit mid-credits villain gets his comeuppance scene. Two end credit scenes? Jesus, this movie really thinks highly of itself, doesn't it? I've got to admit, this was no surprise at all. I'm gonna have to destroy you. What are you? I'm Batman. Come on, old friend. Come back. Become vengeance, dude. Um, wrath. We're taking him to the island? Uh oh. That's just what they'll be expecting us to do. Sorry. I farted. Come here. Willie, the girl was a zygote when you were in the seventh grade. We're gonna make you indestructible. First, 
going to have to destroy you. We can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. What happened? Where'd he go? I did a Peter Pan right here off of this dam, right here. What's the island? We have to go back, Kate. We have to go back! Relax. We're almost there. There it is, the island. And tell me, Mr. Anderson, what good is a phone call if you're unable to speak? Nobody kills you but me. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. Where the hell am I? Listen, man. I'm a friend. I'm a friend. Where were the other drugs going? Colonel Stryker. Colonel William Stryker? Stryker. Stryker, 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 Stryker. 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 Stryker.